Fingers in shot. I am not a professional photographer or videographer. But then again, I'm not a professional guy who puts things in computers. I'm not, I don't consider myself a technology wizard, but, you know, it seems like I am because, well, other people think I am because they're just so inept with troubleshooting and technology, and I tried to address this in the address that in this channel, but, uh, you know, the issue is still there because not a lot of people watch this YouTube channel at this point because of one, well, I don't know why. I don't know why a lot of people watch this channel. Maybe it's because I do minimal editing and ramble. So anyway, boomers are notoriously and stereotypically bad with troubleshooting technology when it goes wrong. And for people out there wondering why, the answer is simple. The parents of boomers had a different attitude from the boomers themselves. The baby boom generation, uh, since the 1970s, had more of an individualist attitude, a do everything on your own and figure it out for yourself. But that's hypocritical. Here's why. Um, because when boomers had issues with their technology, there was always someone at some point in their life that had to step in and help. When they were younger, it was their parents. Their parents were willing to read the manual and learn how the devices worked and functioned. They were able to check tubes and do what they could to keep their stuff running. But uh, boomers, not so much. When they came of age, they took their parents' lessons, and it worked to a certain point. But they didn't really do any of the looking into the device. They just took their parents' knowledge and used that for their VCR. They often didn't go into the advanced settings, and the same is kind of true of Generation X. But then millennials came along, and the internet was coming of age with them. Some millennials had to learn new skills. When I was in school, there were people older than boomers telling me how files worked, how to type, and they were telling me this stuff is really important, and it turned out that was true. My parents didn't get the same education, but they've always had access to it. You've always been able to look up problems with your computers or ask people about it. So, when boomers have a technology issue, I really don't like hearing excuses about why they can't do it themselves. It takes a bit of bravery. Look here, I opened a laptop. I just opened a laptop. I can see the lithium battery that is not catching on fire, fingers crossed, uh, and I can see the components. I am frequently touching the case of this just to make sure it's static doesn't ruin the whole device, but that is a risk I am personally willing to take to install a RAM stick so I can edit videos and render them faster. This device has, a, a, I can put this 16 gigabyte RAM stick in, but I can't put any higher than that. By the way, if anyone's looking for a 32 gigabyte DDR4 laptop RAM stick, let me know. So, yeah, there is some risk to technology, and boomers have been burned doing things themselves because they uh, don't really take the time to learn. Even the fundamentals, they um, have... It, it's really hard to explain, but... Boomers, when something doesn't go their way, they freak out and hope 
someone else will do something for them, whether it's the government or their own kids. So here we are, boomers got a lot of help learning the technology of their time, weren't willing to learn about anything after their kids were born, but their kids were, and their kids are now trying to teach their parents some lessons that they should have figured out on their own. I mean, it's quite comical. My mother didn't know what Control C and Control V did until yesterday. Um, she's in a job where she doesn't do much of that kind of office work. Uh, so, of course, I can understand why you don't know that in particular, but, uh, you, you know, for someone my age, it's laughable because those are really useful keyboard shortcuts. Uh, there's other things that are just the constant forgetting of passwords, and, you know, uh, this was very much confounded with my not using Google Chrome for a while, and then I just decided, you know what, I'm going to move my passwords somewhere and have my mother do the same thing. Um, and two-factor authentication, none of that. That ruined her device once, and she swore never to do it again. And just having this absolute mentality about your technology stuff is, it, it doesn't help with anything. It's not going to help you learn if you make a mistake with your technology and trying to fix something. Usually that mistake can be reversed. Um, but if it does get to the point that it's not, it's a lesson learned. And that's my generation's view with technology. And of course, when I break some when I broke something as a teenager beyond the point of no return, my parents had the money to fix it, and that's no longer the case today. And now it's kind of worrying seeing Generation Z uh, be digital natives. Uh, leaning on me to fix their stuff. Um, and I'm willing to do that as long as you're learning what I'm teaching you. And yeah, even at work, I've had devices just not work the way people had anticipated, have really high expectations, but were not willing to do things like restart the scanner to get pickup orders going. Uh, that's not, not the best rollout of pickup orders, but uh, I have no idea what would have happened to our store if uh, if I wasn't there at the time. Troubleshooting is important, troubleshooting is a skill, and uh, you have to also have some reasoning and if you're, if, if you're crunched on time and if you have to guess, you know, if A then B type of situations, you, you, you got to take what you learn and apply it there. And look, there's this black cover that I just bent. And technology troubleshooting isn't always clean or fun. And there are people with the insides of their computer that look like a mess. That said, they still know more than boomers about that, unless they're the same boomers that helped build this. But I have a feeling that the people who helped invent the microchip at Intel just dropped the ball somewhere and were like, okay, we built this, and now it's other people's job to um, put the part back together again. Oh dear. I might just eat my words on this. There's a component that uh, should always be down. Good thing it didn't shock it with static. That screw. Back. 
we're getting into soldering territory. Frick. Um, I believe that's the solid state drive. If the computer's internal storage has issues, there are some ways to get around that. But yeah, you know, I could have just caused this laptop to uh, cease all functioning. But I have enough curiosity to follow through. And the lack of following through seems to be the biggest issues that boomers have. They uh, panic and expect somebody to step in and fix it for them. While keeping an individual mindset and expectation for other people. I'll just leave it like that for now. Bend that component even more. Um, so, what should we do about that? Um, well, I mean, you got me there. The people on social media the most aren't really the young ones anymore, it's the boomers. I know that there are lots of Gen Z people on TikTok and whatnot, but it, the screen time for people younger than me is actually less than myself and even my parents on average by generation. Uh, because in, the internet is a part of life, but it doesn't have to be everything, and I know for a fact that younger people know this as well. Where do I put the RAM? Oh shoot, that's the cover for the processor. Hey, no, and the screws are not edible. Do not eat the screws. That's the cover for the processor. I messed up that before, but the processor still runs, and so does the machine. I just have to take. touch the case, I have to take this RAM stick and put it do I remember from last time? I really hope I do. Take that RAM stick Oh yeah, that one soldered in, but these two things still need to come out. How do they come out though? Just like that. Just like that. Okay, yeah, the SSD. Shit. I'll just take that. I'll put that there for now. And sometimes uh, this is what getting dirty with technology looks like. You. Uh, Fry stuff, remove stuff. Oh, Jesus. Okay, so I did not ruin the SSD, but I do have to screw that back down. All right, and uh, this video is going to be on that SSD when I upload it or something. 
But yeah, millennials are really good at doing what they can to uh, control chaos in certain situations, including the cat in front of you, which means that uh, gotta deal with the hand you're dealt. Gotta know that mistakes can be made sometimes. And uh, gotta prepare for events that could happen. Yeah. So notice how I am taking the tiny screws and putting them in the cup. I was overconfident about my ability to keep them together, but I did learn this from my dad. And my dad is not an accurate representation of boomers and technology. He has he's a he was an engineer and had the curiosity to do this kind of stuff. So I got this ram stick and I took it out. And I thought this could handle two ram sticks, but I guess 16 gigs is one 16 gig stick is the most this machine can handle. And you know, just grit, perseverance. The things boomers claim they value, this has to apply to your own stuff. Alright, you gotta... What is this? Touched the contact which generally recognized as not smart. You, you gotta take some initiative and do things like this. And look it up. There, I, there it is, the DDR4 stick. And despite... You know, some anxiety here, I was able to put that in, and despite some anxiety, I didn't, I thought I was going to break the SSD and that it was glued in, turns out that's not the case, and I can put another SSD that is bigger into this compartment. It's fun to learn this stuff. For me, it should be, people need to do things like this, they need to have some hands-on learning, and recognize that sometimes things do not go their way as they intended. Looky here, I even almost opened the processor bay again. And oh my god, I'm taking so much risk here. And I'm going to see what happens, but uh, yeah, this is a very very much a video about, you know, sometimes in life you gotta take risks to get the things you want. If you don't take those risks, there isn't much of a reward. Um, you gotta, you gotta, like, you gotta be reasonable about the risk you're taking. Like, you shouldn't just go out into the world and pretend the pandemic over is over and assume your body is going to handle the virus because you drank essential oils or that sort of thing. There, there, there is a limit to what confidence alone can do, but, you know, listening, learning, and doing will be a lot more helpful than running up to someone else and expecting them to do the fix for you. But that's what boomers are doing with technology. And there really is no equivalent with uh, what millennials, Gen Z, the post a piece generations are doing with uh, their lives. While uh, there were participation trophies given in the 1990s. I still have some of those. Yeah. Do, does it look like I value them? Does that do, do millennials really take pride in their participation trophies? No. And uh, they should have never been given out by boomers, but they were. And that's not my problem. That is yours. Maybe I should uh, film my
myself doing a more concise take, maybe I should just call this video Boomers and Technology, or yeah, I will, and the more concise take where I just stand and talk, that's going to be Boomers and Technology, a Minnesota perspective. I do not have the steadiest of hands. Is there a longer black screw? There are two. But I think this short one was what kept the SSD down here. Make sure that is all the way in. That other thing is all the way in. Oh my god. I don't even know if I'm still rolling right now. And I'm not going to run back and check until... I get a chance to thread this screw in. Come on, buddy. Well, well, it is nice to know that I can upgrade the SSD in here, but I have maxed out the RAM. That's as high as it'll go, 16 gigs. So if I ever need more, I'm gonna have to build or start with a newer device. Uh, I will be right back. I just had a big brain moment. Here is a here are a couple of facts that aren't very fun. This camera I'm recording with is not very good at video. It's better at photos. Uh, and also, let me go back and grab them. has more RAM than my brain. These tweezers have almost never been used for their intended purpose. It's all, it seems to be used for uh, technology more than grooming and or removing splinters. I uh, do hygiene and grooming with other and better ways. Uh, Hold the screw like that. Try God. It shouldn't be that difficult to start threading a screw. Dang. Well, if there were just gloves that could my hand more steady when I'm doing stuff like this. And a cat that will shut up and be quiet while I'm doing this. SSD is back in its slot. I can't believe that it's that tiny. But there it is, and I would love to. 256 gigabytes. Oh, I mean, I have. There are micro SD cards bigger than that, but I would love to put. I would love to have more internal memory in this thing. That would be a big help. This RAM stick just 
4 gigabyte RAM stick is going to go back in here. So I have 4 times the RAM in here, and if the computer's not uh, doing other stuff, if it's just rendering a video, it should be 4 times faster, but they are. Uh, I, I'm going to tamper, taper my expectations on that. It's going to be realistically 3 times faster. I really hope this boots. And sometimes doing two things at once is not a good thing. Maybe I shouldn't have uh, tried giving my perspective on boomers and technology while replacing a RAM stick. Maybe I did something to prevent this from booting while distracting by talking to you on the camera. But hey, that's life. Sometimes you just gotta learn by doing things. If this does boot, stroke of luck. It doesn't. Life goes on. I'll spend a bit less money on a better device. Well, a slightly better device. Thanks, Bitcoin miners. Well, I know SSDs are cheap. Really big ones are cheap. So for those of you who are having issues with Google Photos, that is a fix. And a good one. It's going to stay like that. Just uh, Google Photos if you're looking for a fix. If you are looking for a fix for your Google Photos storage, the storage itself is cheap. It's just the GPUs and the RAM that's going up in price because of these Bitcoin miners that are ruining everything and not really making a good case for why cryptocurrency should be a staple of the global economy. Um, I, I get the concept, um, but it, it's not going to execute in a way that's good for society. I think we could do a Bretton Woods type of financial system with uh, currency that is backed up virtually in some way, maybe with a proof of stake instead of a proof of work. Um, and we can have other people doing that, but the proof of work cryptocurrencies, in my opinion, need to be banned because they use web way too much energy, uh, they are not a stable way to transfer money, or even make money. Like, look at the price fluctuations. I cannot defend Bitcoin the way it currently is. And uh, you're turning lakes in New York into a hot tub. Guys, Bitcoin is not the future unless you change that into proof of stake, which uses way less energy and uh, has more flexible uses because of that. Uh, another thing I want to point out is the NFTs. Again, great idea. It's being executed poorly. There, there is a better way to do it. Find it. That's a quote from Thomas Edison, someone who is who, who was overrated and now is underrated. Again, really, really complicated guy, that Edison, but he helped a lot build our modern, in building our modern society, and so did Nikola Tesla. They both had a very significant role in electricity and technology. So, this is not going to be part of the Minnesota Perspective series. Um, this is just going to be some raw. This is just going to be, you know, boomers, technology, and Bitcoin. That's just going to be the title of this video. And, good, and you know, the whole right to repair thing. I subscribe to Louis Rossman, and I definitely agree that we have to have a minimum federal standard for what stuff in our technology we can fix. I am never going to buy a 
laptop or desktop where things are glued in or soldered in where I can't fix it. And thank you, New Egg, for letting me buy the components to build my own machine because if this thing doesn't boot, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'll build my own desktop because I, I really don't need the portability of this laptop. And even if I did, I would probably get some minimal spec machine that can connect to the main desktop driver. And that desktop's gonna have tons of RAM and be, well, it'll, it'll have the high end of what I need because, you know, I want to render videos as quickly as I can. 64 gigs would be good. 128, if I could afford it, would be better. Um, just the biggest maxed out SSD I can get. And the operating system was just, you know, the uh, operating system is still going to be Windows just for practical reasons. But now this laptop has four times the short term memory of me or what it had before. Will it boot? Can I have you look at the screen here? and then it goes dark again. So I might have messed up something to do with the monitor. <laughs> oh, good Lord, please. Load. Plug this device into another monitor and pray. Power supply back in, come on, baby. Boot. Okay. All right, it is running. We're good. Oh, but I gotta put the keyboard connector back in. But yeah, yeah, sometimes technology be like that. In fact, every time there's something wrong with your technology, you're gonna have to, you don't have to open the thing up all the time, but you do have to think about what the problem is and try, you know, you have to, Oh, how do I put this? Test, trace, and isolate. When something goes wrong, you're testing it so you can see the problem. you got to trace the steps that led to the issue, and then you got to isolate the steps you need to take care of it. That's all for this video. Um... Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.